at that temperature. Hello YouTube, WJ Sandy Dad here, and today I'm painting the final panel that needs some TLC. Right there is the spot that's been driving me crazy. So I just touched it up briefly so that it wouldn't rust, but today I'm gonna go ahead and paint basically all of the door. I'm not gonna paint the top trim part, but what I'm doing is, you see how I've kind of rolled the tape up like that? So what I'll do is blend the clear up to there, and I don't think it'll show much once it's all said and done. So just like all the other paint projects, prep and masking are the keys to success. So you see what I've done is wrapped the plastic here and it may not be showing on camera, but that's actually inside the door there. And then I've taped it back because it's wanting to push over onto the paint side. And I may need to tighten that up before I actually start spraying. I gave it a uh, little bit heavier sand with the 400 grit across here to uh, make sure that's smooth so it doesn't show. And then the rest of the door, I give a very light dusting with the 400 grit just to give it a little something to stick to. So process is uh, just like always. I'm gonna clean it up with a uh, paint prep product. You can oftentimes substitute 99% uh, alcohol for a paint prep, but obviously the paint prep is the preferred product. Now in prior videos, I've showed you just about every possibility of how to paint these. This time, I had these cans laying around I'd forgotten about, so I'm gonna use these on the door. These are the Performance White Duplicolor. Now, if they've been sitting too long, they do tend to get yellow and that's my fear is that they're gonna spray yellow. So if I spray these and they come out looking very yellow, then thankfully I have other options to finish up with, such as just the regular spray white like I used on the bumper or the uh, white that I have from the spray gun. So I've got options, but I'm gonna use these up today first and see if we can get at least a little bit of white color out of them. This is what I'm using to prep it. I'm going to shake it really well. I've been shaking it for about a minute already and it's warm here so that's good and obviously you should wear protection. So we'll spray it a real light coat and let it dry five to 10 minutes. Just keep spraying coats until you have uniform color and coverage. I can still see the spot there. You can still see it there. So it's gonna take several coats as well as that little scrape there. It's gonna take several coats to cover. The rest of it should be pretty good fairly quickly.
Starting over on this side, these are the acceptable white paints for the uh, Crown Victoria Performance or Peel Formance White, if you want to call it that. Uh, this is what I used on the rear bumper, matched great. This is what I used on the hood, trunk, and roof. It's the Duplicolor Championship White. And of course, Duplicolor also makes what they claim to be the exact match of the Performance White. And uh, these are about three or four dollars a spray can, I think. About eight bucks a spray can. And I can't remember, it's maybe like 20 bucks for the jar, but you gotta spray it out of your gun. And then over here, I got the clear. It's about 85 today, or we use the uh, medium. And basically you mix this four parts to one part, spray it out of the gun. I've got it at about 25 PSI on the gun. The wind has kicked up since I finished the white coat. So there's the door with just the white, no clear on it. And I'm hoping that this wind is not gonna screw up my paint now because I've been battling it. It's been pulling this up and giving me lots of grief. And it was not a windy day at all when I started this project. And I have some tarps I might be able to put up. They might help a little bit, I don't know, I'll have to see. Easiest way to mix is one of these mixing cups. You just find the line for the door. I'm using two. So I've got filled the clear up to the two and then I'll put the uh, activator up to this number two line. And we'll stir it up real well. Basically, there's a couple speeds you can spray it. If you go too fast or too far away from the job, you're going to get a lot of orange peel um, because it's not getting enough paint on there. So when it basically hits and it kind of dries and speckles, and that's where we get that orange peel effect. If you go too slow or you're too close, then that's when you start getting the runs and drips, even though everything's nice and smooth and it, it dries with a smooth finish. There's too much paint, so it'll start running. Obviously, you wanna go in between. Now, the problem is there's not really a right speed to do it. It depends on so many conditions, what you're spraying with, the temperature, the conditions, the wind, what paint, everything. So you kinda of gotta learn by trial and error, unfortunately. But like I said, if you're seeing a lot of orange peel, you're probably going a little too fast or you're a little too far away from what you're painting. And if you're seeing runs and drips, obviously you're going either too slow or you're too close. Try to find the happy medium there. you get the best results. Probably, no matter how good you are, you're probably gonna need a little bit of sanding and buffing and polishing when you're done to have it nice and perfectly smooth. You might get lucky, like when I did the bumper, it's almost perfect. So I haven't touched it at all. This clear requires five to 10 minute dry time in between coats. So that's what I'm doing. And then each coat is gonna go a little bit thicker because I'm trying to get a final coat that's smooth and won't require a lot of sanding or polishing.
so it's done now just waiting for it to dry and I think it came out really nice it's gonna need probably a little bit of sanding if I want to make this perfect I don't know if you can see from this angle there's a bit of orange peel on there but it's not horrific so it's probably like a 2500 grit sandpaper to smooth it out so like I said it really came out looking pretty good I'm gonna delay pulling off all this masking because I find a lot of times when I pull it off if the paints still a little bit tacky whatever stuck to the masking paper will stick to the paint and since a lot of what's stuck there is paint it seems like it melds itself with the new paint and won't come off the other trick that I did up here instead of using the plastic sheeting I just used a trash bag since I needed a smaller sheet I don't want to cut up a piece of plastic but what I do differently than a lot of people is I don't cut the trash bag up so basically I should be able to use that as a trash bag now <laughs> I try to recycle in that regard what you want to do to remove the masking is work slowly and work away from your paint job so like you want to pull your tape up away rather than down towards um, because when you paint it can stick to that tape enough that when you peel it it can rip the paint right off Some of you aren't able to do this, but I have videos to show you how to fix this problem if you can't open it from the inside. So this is what happens to the duplicolor. I don't know if it's real obvious on there, but the front door is white and the back door has got a bit of a tannish yellow hue to it. It's still white, but it's not the same as that white. And I don't know why, but it seems that the uh, performance white duplicolor cans all seem to do that the longer they sit the yellower they get so I'll have to decide if I can live with that or if I want to come back and hit this with the championship white out of the spray gun or even just the rattle can white that seems to match pretty well it's crazy that it does that but I've seen a lot of people posting on Facebook about that. And there is the edge where I left the tape down and 
really you can't it's hard to tell where I stopped painting let me put it that way it's I mean if you get down here and really look you'll see it but it's amazing how just rolling the tape just a little bit gives you that kind of softened blended line rather than that hard line if I had just taped it straight across and of course friendly bug has already landed on there that's the downside to being in the country but you can do this to your car I mean I, 2020 hindsight I wish I'd have used that paint because you see color wise it's basically a perfect match and who knows maybe this will whiten up in the sun a little bit I don't know but uh, I mean compared to paying somebody to paint your car you can certainly do that but this is a doable job if you've got a just a few basic tools and you spend the time you can do it.